I'd like to provide a brief overview on WebSphere Cast Iron, IBM WebSphere Cast Iron. Uh, I just prepared some agenda on that. Uh, let's go through the agenda. What we are going to learn, what we are going to do, some do the scenarios. What we are going to learn. Uh, and the most first and most thing um, we need introduction on SVA. service for internet architecture and introduction to enterprise application integration and websphere cast iron is related to some cloud integration technology so we uh, we just go through introduction to cloud and what the types of clouds we have and these are the basics uh, just before going to any tech, any middleware technology or any ibm tool and when coming to cast iron uh, to ibm upstairs cast iron in that we will go through cast iron history and architecture components that what we have in cast iron and some business use cases yep, yep. and apart from the introduction part uh, we'll have cast iron studio that is to implement our end to end business integrations uh, like just we need to go through uh castern versions which are available in present market and uh, we have a castern studio that is for implementation part we need to just go through the design of the castern studio and various endpoints that are available for integration uh, we have third party connectors uh, that that might be on premise or off premise we have uh, multiple endpoints to connect to different applications and we need to have an overview on different type of options available in castern studio uh this is uh, all about the aston studio and we need to know about the appliances here on live uh, these three will be useful for deploying our castern castern orchestrations or interfaces whatever you can say to any server in general any if you are going to implement any application that we are deploying or staging it in some server if let us say if it is a java application that was that was staging in some apache tomcat or jboss or anything uh, anything of service similar way if you are going to implement any orchestration uh, in castern technology we call it a service as an orchestration so we need to deploy that is an appliance that might be we have three type of appliances we need to go through all these in this in this uh, section and after that uh, we need to have some uh, hello world orchestration that is a basic scenario um using the sample use cases in castern studio and we need to deploy that sample application in castern appliance and how we are going to deploy that and how we are going to invoke a service in an appliance in that manner and we have uh, different type of activities available in castern studio for available for implementing our integrations if you are going to implement a service uh, to transform data so obviously we have some transformation activities for that uh we will go through all those activities uh for xml parsing what we need to use if it is a fixed length file if it is an input mainframe file so what type of activities we need to configure that and if you are going to connect to any ftp or database so we have multiple endpoints for that as well if you are going to connect to ftp we are going with ftp endpoint or sftp and if it is a database when coming to on premise uh, we will talk about database sap and mq Uh, so these will come under on premise and when you are going to integrate with any, any off premise that might be microsoft azure or salesforce or oracle crm so we have multiple endpoints to connect to off premise as well that that might be cloud instances and we have uh, apart from the transformation and uh, additional features we we can connect also mq as well mq and as once complete with the, all the activities uh, we need to go through all the use cases which are including uh, all these activities and uh, we have um, many of uh, predefined functions in castern and we'll go through how the how these uh, functions will uh, implement in business use cases and how we can write our own uh, custom functions in uh, here we have uh, some additional functionality that is javascript we can build our own scripts based on our javascript and we have xslt in castern as well we can uh, use xslt to transform xml or to any other data type to, uh, to other any other format 
and another one important thing that is secure the network concepts in cache analyze when you talk about appliances uh, we have multiple appliances that is physical virtual appliance and cache turn live cache turn live we call it as a cloud instance virtual edition cache turn live ibm will provide some credentials to us to log into cloud space and we can access our appliance there not uh, we don't need any hardware or we don't need any software to install on our network so if you are if you are going to implement any integration in your uh, in your network so you are going to deploy that in the cloud that is the cache turn live so you need a secure connect rest relation between your network and cloud network so in that case you are going to select secure concepts secure connector concepts and these are the major uh, concepts in cache turn and uh, we'll go to the business use case as well here uh, i i will be providing some integration scenarios on on this and off and ftp and database integration scenarios and apart from that uh, here we can use external services as a web service and we can implement our cluster and service and expose it as a web service uh, we'll go through those scenarios as well and other best practices which include all activities in the cluster like transformation activities data quality activities uh, utility activities and some logical activities Uh, we'll be preparing some interfaces which includes all the type of activities so we'll give an overview on what the activities and uh, where exactly we use those activities and finally uh, we are going to uh, deploy our service in cache turn live or physical appliance or virtual edition and from there we are going to get some endpoint url that will be providing to any api users or any front end users that might be dotnet or java anything so they will be calling our back end service so we'll be providing the url that is from appliance and uh, for cache turn live we don't need any configurations as i told you earlier if you are selecting virtual appliance that we need uh, some installation scenario, some installation guide on that so we'll be providing that as well uh, this is all the uh, cache turn as in the data i have prepared for and now uh, let's go through the presentation uh, um, exactly what is cache turn and why we are going to select this uh, is this fine now okay let's start the presentation on what's the cache turn cloud integration yep let's start with uh, cache turn how you actually uh, it was not an ibm product earlier it was founded in 2001 by integration industry experts of castern systems itself the organization name is castern systems itself uh, and ibm acquired in 2010 now it's an ibm company uh, it was leading one of the leading software as a service service solution and cloud integration technology it mainly focus on speed and simplicity that is integration in days uh, if you are uh, selecting any java or dotnet application to integrate with uh, any cloud and on-premise application or might be any other uh, middleware technology as well you need some coding there that might be ecl coding or java coding or uh, anything in the integration tool as well here you don't need of any coding we, we need just configuration uh, to integrate with on-premise and off-premise so we can run the integration in days and it enables companies to integrate applications regardless whether those are on-premise or off-premise whether it might be private or public clouds so we can easily integrate with any type of uh, cloud clouds which might be configured in on-premise or off-premise that might be different type of clouds uh, there is a private public and hybrid clouds we'll go through in the next next sessions and it provides a complete flexibility in deployment options uh, it has uh, multiple options for our deployment uh, if you are going to implement our service you are going to deploy that appliance we can call it as appliance name is webster data for cache turn appliance xh40 so we have uh, three types uh, that is virtual appliance physical appliance and multi tenant cloud service we call it as webster cache turn live virtual appliance is uh, ibm is going to provide some image file that you need to be configure on your machine and your and your machine will act as a cache turn virtual appliance okay and when coming to physical appliance ibm is go going to provide some hardware it's like some uh, uh, some wooden some iron rack you need to iron rack rack with server you need to configure 
within your network. So it can act as a physical appliance. And the upstate cash turn live is when you purchase license from uh, IBM, they will, they will going to provide some uh, username and passwords, some credentials and certificates to you to log into the upstate cash turn live cloud instance. Here you don't need to bother about any maintenance or any installation or any upgradations. It's automatically it's upgraded every time when when there is any fix back when there is any patch for the production appliance or any appliances you are going to get some notification emails from uh, IBM so that you can schedule your production that's the main advantage uh, when you are searching for the uh, cloud instance and here uh, cash and cloud integration platform um, in the middle of the layers uh, we have IBM Upspeer cash and cloud integration but in the bottom, we have homegrown applications and packaged applications like it might be CSV, it might be XML files, and it might be private web services. Those comes under packaged applications and homegrown applications like uh, SAP, database, Microsoft SQL Server, or anything. These are comes under on -premise. And when looking to the cloud integration, that might IBM Smart Cloud and IBM Bluemix, Amazon Cloud, Salesforce. So many of the almost all the cloud integration we can do from cash data. And we have a solution that is uh, earlier we discussed three types of deployment options. One is cast in cloud, physical appliance, and virtual appliance, and total connectivity. We have uh, pre built connectivity for, and it will be suitable for all type of projects like meta migration, like meta process integration, and UI machines. And here we have a template integration projects concept here. That is tip exchange, tip development, tip, tip community. Tip exchange means uh, we have a predefined template integration projects in cache and library. Uh, suppose if you are going to implement an orchestration that is extracting data from database and posting some records to Salesforce. Uh, so you can set your templates. Uh, cache and team is already provided some templates. If you are going to uh, search by using by mentioning like uh, I'm using target as database, I'm using source as database and target as Salesforce, you can get some predefined templates. Uh, you can download any one of the those and you can modify that as per your requirement. Um, here the, the main concept is reusability will be applicable. You don't need to implement from scratch. Uh, we have some pre multiple predefined templates. You can uh, use any of the things. And we will look into cache table versions. The first and foremost version is uh, 6.0.0 when IBM acquired. Before that, we have multiple versions from 1 to 6. When IBM acquired, um, uh, we'll look into that version 6.0.0 um, is the cache and systems version. And in 6.1.0, the new secure, uh, the new connector development kit concept was introduced. We can implement our own, our own uh, connectors. Uh, suppose, let, let us say, an example, if you are going to implement a service, uh, which which performs some operations on calculations like calculator option so you are going to implement that as a development kit and you can provide that to other ones so they can import uh, that service into their application and they can work on that connectors this is one of the simple user defined connector here uh, a few more activities added an extra connector was added in this caster And Salesforce latest version of Visual uh, will be 6.1 and 6.2. There is uh, no activity added, but just a performance performance upgradation. And 6.3, they added uh, JSON and REST activities. Um, like earlier, we don't have options to uh, process the JSON data. So here we have a JSON activities as well. In 6.3, we have uh, multiple activities on HTTP. We have uh, some header information and uh, metadata information that, are, that, are, that have added in 6.3 version. And, then, and before six, after 6.3 to 7 version, we have performance upgrades and not much on activities. And in the 7, we have a PGP encryption and decryption concepts that have added. Earlier, we do not have any encryption and decryption scenarios. Here, we have added those. And in, again, that 7.5, we have. Uh, 7.5, no more activities added, just uh, added a performance enhancements and improve the strength and infrastructure, that which is applicable for physical appliance and cloud instance. 
and now uh, the current version is 7.5.1 that is that from that version we call gaster as app connect professional ibm web sphere app connect professional here uh, the most uh, important concept they have introduced is we can push our apps, our gaster service to api management uh, ibm api management that was under uh, api technology we can expose our caster and service to API connect from caster and appliances. We have that additional functionality here. And this is all about the presentations of caster. And when you look at caster studio, uh, this is the integrated development environment, which is called uh, caster studio, which looks like uh, simply I can tell uh, it's like an advanced or eclipse. And uh, we have a, a graphical user interface on that. And we have drag and drop option for that. And Studio includes the following capabilities. It's able, it has ability to design integrations from scratch using drag and, drag and drop design palette. And we have built-in connectivity to many on-premise and off-premise applications. We have uh, uh, endpoints here to connect to any off-premise and on-premise. And built-in transformation capabilities. If you are going to read any XML, just you provide XSD for that, and it automatically passes using the cache and activities and provides you the provides you required result. And apart from that, we have built-in functions to transfer from, from one source format required to the uh, third business, third-party business applications, uh, which is required. And we can directly publish our cache and service to any integration appliance uh, without exporting our project. And we have a connected development kit uh, capabilities to expose uh, standard-based standards-based interfaces. Apart from the existing interfaces, we can create our own connectors. And we have a cache and approach to developing integrations. The left side, first and foremost thing, if you are going to implement any use case, that you should be able to implement in cache and studio. That might be you can implement from scratch or from or download some templates from community cache and template integration projects. So once you are done with your development, so you will be deploying the cache and orchestration cache and interface to any appliance. Uh, in this uh, use case, let's call it might be physical appliance or virtual appliance. Forget about the cache and live. It might be physical or virtual. So, if you are uh, if you have created integration that will uh, access your uh, application endpoints that might be database or SAP that is to be configured on your mesh on your network on your organization network, and you are uh, sending the data to some cloud that might be Salesforce. That's a public one. You can access from anywhere. So you are going to deploy that uh, orchestration in WebSphere cache and integration appliance. Here I can call this appliance as virtual appliance or physical appliance. Means that should be configured within your organization network. So this endpoint that might be SAP or database is configured in the same organization where database appliance configured. Where the cache and appliance configured. So uh, here, uh, both are in same network. So here, no issues. We can directly deploy our application and we can run our integrations. And here we have cast and live architecture. The same thing here applied. When you are going to deploy your orchestration here, that, that is in cast and studio from scratch or from your own. And you are going to deploy that in upstairs cast and live. Live means it's not within your network. It's somewhere. It's in cloud. So you have created an orchestration that is connecting to on-premise application and off-premise application, and you are deploying that in cache and live. So your service is in cache and live, and you are trying to access the data which is in database, which is configured in your network. So here um, it is trying to attempt a connection from cloud to your organization network. Uh, there is no uh, way to access it. So here we have a concept called secure connector. So you are going to create some secure connector in cache and live. From there, you have to download the secure connector file from cache and live, and you need to install that secure connector configure file on your uh, organization network. Uh, when you install the secure connector on your network, uh, here there is a secure connection got established between the cache and live and your organization network. So here uh, you can you can easily access the data from on-premise to off-premise. And I have another point here to mention. Um, when you are talking about when you are talking to talking about the applications which is in Dev QA, UAT, test, pre-prod, and prod, uh, 
uh, if you are talking with physical appliance or virtual appliance, you need to configure multiple instances for each environment. If you have, if you are selecting for physical appliance, you need to purchase multiple appliances for four different environments. When compared to when coming to cast and live, we have all the environments in a single appliance, uh, separated by different tabs. So let us see. We have cast environment here and plus environment here. So uh, this is all about the cast and live and physical appliances. Um, let's talk about the secure connector. Uh, it allows CA Live to connect endpoints behind the file. So you're trying to access that. It includes followed security features. It initiates communication with CA Live that is validated before the secure connector comes for the processing. And communication between secure connector and CA Live is based on standard SSL authentication. Uh, we don't need to, we don't need to know about all these details, just an overview. And here it also includes X509 certificates uh, for the encryption and decryption cases in Gas Terminal Live. And the cache and integration, uh, what does it do? How does it do in business uh, technology? Uh, cache and cloud integration solution enables organizations to rapidly compare software, service, and cloud and on-premise applications. And rapidly integrate cloud applications with hundreds of on-premise like SAP, DB2, uh, SQL, Oracle, and, uh, and might be private or, private or public clouds uh, that may be exposed as web services. And we have a not a coding approach, uh, it's completely configuration apart, uh, apart from small snippets of JavaScript and accessibility. And we have many reusable templates uh, to accelerate time and value. So we don't need to implement any interfaces from scratch. And why we need in business? Uh, how it is different from other IBM integration tools and why the iNode cache and have all the IBM middleware solution? Uh, like if you are going to select from any cloud integration, it's completely fit for purpose and with hundred of template integration points and no other IBM product as of now is built for built for cloud integration technology. And how it differentiates from other one? It's a complete one platform for all cloud integration needs and it's already proven thousands of uh, interfaces are deployed in production uh, around the world. And it is a trusted strategic partner for all lead cloud, all leading cloud vendors. And how uh, uh, can you connect to homegrown applications? Uh, we can easily connect to database, all major databases, and flat files and web services. Um, we need only username, password, port numbers for the database. And for Salesforce connectivity, we need username and security tokens. And flat files simply you can uh, access the flat files using some transformation activities in Cache Channel. And here we have one uh, business use case here, uh, sales order and invoice visibility. Earlier uh, we do have uh, uh, Siemens support transfer distribution organization used to have some complex coding structure that they are using SQL scripts to elevate uh, SAP data to Salesforce and Salesforce to SAP. Here cache and replace all the custom code and here it provides bidirectional synchronization on uh, SAP database and SAP server and Salesforce system. And here, uh, let us look at this uh, application. Here, uh, we can call it as bidirectional synchronization. Suppose uh, SAP system, uh, suppose an organization using customer master data in SAP and accounts data in Salesforce. If any customer are going to add some IDOC in SAP, cash turn will automatically uh, fix that IDOC and that is going to be populated in Salesforce. And even uh, when any of the customer account data, account address will going to update in some Salesforce. So that's automatically picked up and send it send a night up to SAP. Here uh, we have some bidirectional synchronization here. So both are in uh, sync, SAP and Salesforce. Um, like we have a data enrichment and aggregation concept also here. This is one of the important business use case. Uh, if you are retrieving uh, some order data, order details from FTP server and for the product info which is residing in an Oracle database or SQL, so based on the FTP order, you are going to pick some product database from a database and finally you are going to create a consolidated report in some database. Uh, from that, the third party application is extracting the order data. So here uh, we are going to aggregate and uh, aggregate and uh, co coordinate and consolidate the final data here. So here also oh, we can use bidirectional information and aggregation. 
data enrichment and aggregation um these are the main business businesses uh, this is all from my end uh, regarding cash thank you